Through the open door in heaven, John is able to look into the heavenly temple. What first catches his attention is the majestic throne with God the Father sitting upon it. The throne is central to everything that takes place in the scene, it is featured 17 times in chapters 4 and 5. Everything in the throne room is portrayed in relation to the throne. Around the throne, Revelation 4 verse 3, around the throne were 24 thrones. From the throne, 4 verse 5, from the throne came flashes of lightning. Before the throne, 4 verse 6, and before the throne there was as it were a sea of glass. Then, in the midst of the throne, chapter 5 verse 6. And between the throne and the four living creatures. The centrality of the throne in the vision is fundamental to the theology of the scene. John was not the first to observe the splendor of the heavenly throne room. Daniel 7 verse 9 and 10. As I looked, thrones were placed, and the Ancient of Days took his seat, his clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool, his throne was fiery flames. Its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and came out from before him, a thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court sat in judgment, and all the books were opened. Each provides a unique description of the grandeur of God's throne and the heavenly hosts in service to God. However, Ezekiel 1 most closely resembles Revelation 4. About one-third of the words in Revelation 4 also occur in the throne vision of Ezekiel chapter 1. In all the Old Testament throne visions, God was regularly seen as sitting upon a throne. In the ancient world, a throne denoted power and authority. The person who sat on the throne ruled over a territory. The throne of God, thus, stands for his ruling authority over the universe. His ruling authority is, however, challenged by a usurping enemy power. The book of Revelation refers to the throne of Satan and his earthly cohorts, who are set in opposition to God's sovereignty and power. The central issue in the ongoing great conflict between God and Satan is who has the right to rule. Revelation chapter 4 and 5 portrays a decisive event in that conflict. The exaltation of Christ to the heavenly throne because of his sacrificial death on the cross of Calvary. John does not attempt to describe God by using the anthropomorphic language used by the Old Testament prophets. He focuses instead on God's radiant glory, which takes a characteristic form. The Apostle Paul reminds us that God dwells in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, 1 Timothy 6 verse 16. The Old Testament often speaks of the splendid glory surrounding God, Psalm 104 verse 2, which can hardly be expressed in human language. John describes it in terms of the dazzling glow of precious stones. Jasper, Sardius Carnelian, and Emerald. These three stones were regarded in the ancient world as representatives of precious stones. Ezekiel mentions them, along with other precious stones that adorned Lucifer, portraying him as a paradigm for the king of Tyre, Ezekiel 28 verse 13, You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. Sardius, topaz, and diamond, beryl, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, emerald, and carbuncle, and crafted in gold were your settings. And your engravings. On the day that you were created they were prepared. The selection of these three precious stones accents their theological significance in the scene. Sardius and Jasper were the first and last stones on the breastplate of the high priest in the Old Testament, representing Reuben as the eldest and Benjamin as the youngest of Jacob's sons. The Emerald, as the fourth stone on the breastplate, represented Judah. These three stones are also found among the foundation stones in the New Jerusalem, which are inscribed with the names of the Twelve Apostles. The flashing brilliance of the precious stones produces a rainbow that surrounds the throne. Centuries earlier, Ezekiel witnessed in a vision a rainbow around God's throne, signifying the likeness of the glory of the Lord, Ezekiel 1 verse 28. The rainbow functions as the sign of God's covenant. The precious stones and the rainbow, thus, are intended to provide confidence in God's covenant promise to his people and in his faithfulness to that promise. Finally. John observes flashes of lightning, 
sounds, and peals of thunder issuing from the throne, chapter 4 verse 5, that accentuate the splendor of the occasion. The scene evokes the giving of the law to Moses at Mount Sinai. Exodus 19 verse 16, when Israel, having been redeemed from Egypt, was inaugurated as the people of God and a kingdom of priests, Exodus 19 verse 4 to 6. In a similar fashion, John now observes as Christ, having redeemed humanity by his blood, receives the sealed scroll from God and inaugurates the redeemed as a kingdom and priests to God. The throne room of the heavenly temple is a grand, majestic place, accommodating countless heavenly beings. John specifies four distinct groups of participants in the scene. The first person John observes in the throne room is God the Father sitting on the throne, Revelation 4 verse 2. He is the object of worship for the entire heavenly assembly. The next one mentioned is the Holy Spirit, the second member of the Godhead. He is referred to as the seven spirits of God, and is symbolized by the seven torches of fire before the throne. The phrase, the seven spirits of God, denotes the fullness and universality of the work of the Holy Spirit in the Church. The one whose absence is felt is the third member of the Godhead. Jesus does not appear in the scene until chapter 5, when he is greeted and worshipped by the whole heavenly assembly.